everyone who pretty much already everyone that already works here. Luke, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Luke, it's nice to meet you. This is. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Ashley. Hi. I'm Tanner. So you guys are all Meadow, and he's catering. Um, so they pretty much know everyone because they've been here a while. Um, what we teach basically here at this station is uh, kind of how to present yourself now that you're working in a private club uh, and reservations and some of the events and things that, are, that go on. Uh, so I'll be brief. Um, a refresher course for everyone else, I suppose. So we like to say when you come into Forest Highlands, it's their, it's their Disney land. And how do you feel when you go into Disneyland? You know, you're happy and you feel special and you feel really good. And a lot of our members come in and they say, you know, this is my Disneyland. Um, so the way we present ourselves, you know, shoulders back, um, positive, smiley faces. Uh, we don't point. Uh, if we want to show somebody something, we, we escort them. We have an open hand to show them. Um, just all those little matters all make sense. When you answer the phone, you always identify yourself. So the Pine Canyon this is here and here. Uh, make sure that when you <laughs> when you answer the phone call, uh, make sure if you don't know the answer, put them on hold. They can hear you. If you walk around with the phone, they can hear you. Make sure you put them on hold. Find an answer. If you can't find an answer, get the name and number. We'll call them back right away. Then hand that paper to somebody. Don't set it down. Find somebody that can help you out give them that paper. Um, professionalism at work. It's very, very important. Uh, the way we speak, the way, you know how um, you go to Chick-fil-A and they say, my pleasure. That's what we say here. We don't say things like, hang on a second. Uh, are you still there? We don't say that, you know. <laughs> we don't say, no problem. We don't say, of course. We say, my pleasure. We say, certainly. Um, instead of, can I, we say, may I help you? Anything that you can do to step up that your, your uh, level of uh, speech. When we do deal with members, sometimes we do have to say no. So just remember this always. Have you ever talk, spoken to someone on the phone and they just flat out don't help you at all? No, we don't do that. It's so frustrating, right? Uh, so picture yourself in that in that member's shoes. They want to have breakfast, but we don't sit down and have breakfast here. Well, but we do have a whole one cafe. We want to go ahead and take you out there. We've got breakfast burritos, or we have Calf City's Cafe. We call that no with options. So if you're going to say no, say, you know, offer them something else instead. Um, I pound it into the ground usually until they say, you know what, I'm good. And I at least really, really try. I really try to get them something, you know? I'm like, I can be there at 8 and I'll cook you my, the eggs myself. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's ever accepted. I don't know why. If a member ever gets angry with you because you have to say no and they don't like your options, just get their name and number and we'll call them back. All right? um, but just assure them that we're going to be, go ahead and get it resolved for them. Okay? We all know about the, there's a the difference between events and dining reservations. Um, I'm just going to speak a little bit about dining reservations uh, with you. Uh, and then we have our events, and those are events, uh, one time things. Labor Day, Fourth of July, Taste of Forest Highlands, Memorial Day, that's where we kick everything off. Uh, events can, the member can just go online and register for them there. Okay? The reservation system for the dining, you can also go online and they usually call it. Most of our events are unlimited seating, uh, the big parties, but a lot of them, uh, if we have them in the club room or like the Taste of Forest Highlands, they are limited, so they will book up fast. So if a member says, hey, can you sign me up for 10 people for 4th of July or for Taste of Forest Highlands, why don't you just tell them to go ahead to go to the website? Because um, you will get distracted, you might not do it, and then they'll come back and get angry with you on the fourth bowl. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, the catering team usually does most of the events here, uh, but we also do events all together. Uh, when we go do golf tournaments or things like that. We also do things like weddings and private member events. Um, and those are all catering. So if somebody comes to you and says, I want to have a birthday party, I want to have this at the park, I want to do that, it's all catering. So you just bring that to me and the catering team takes care of that. Uh, but take those seriously. So if you hear somebody say, I'm having a birthday, you know, we're going to have dinner here. Oh, let me see, would you like a cake? We're always trying to upsell, trying to help them, you know, get the most out of their visit. 
We have cool lands every Friday night out here on the lawn, and that's all hands on deck. Uh, that's a lot of fun. The, all the members come, and it's, you know, they, they come up to Phoenix, and that's where they, where they go. They go straight there. Um, and that's pretty much it. One thing I wanted to touch on is that the food truck, which Angel's telling you about, is available for catering to members' houses now. So if somebody says, hey, how do I get this food truck to my house? Well, you can actually get that food truck to your house. You need to come and ask about that. So now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Do what? The golf events. I did. Well, yeah, we pretty much prefer the golf events. It's a lot all hands on deck. Catering will mix with the regular staff, and we all kind of help each other out. There's a lot of them. Um, so you'll get the hang of those real quick. So yeah, go. So I'll first go over those other dining outlets that's in the middle of that back page. Um, no matter where you're working or what area, it's really important that you have this information. The members are just going to be asking this through the host, but while you're serving them or while you're walking on the grounds heading to your car, they might ask you a question. So it's important to have this information. Um, like Karen said, we don't like to just say no, we like to provide other options. So a great example would be our prime times during lunch and dinner. Um, you know, for example, during lunch they might come up after a tennis match or after golf or just with their kids. They're expecting to get sat at 12.30 and we're fully booked. We're not just going to tell them that we don't have space for them. If the meadow is open, we're going to call the meadow for them and see before sending them all the way over there. Um, but some more convenient options if you're at the Canyon Clubhouse would be our whole one cafe. Um, that's just going to be right outside to the left. We've got quick sandwiches, snacks, drinks for them. And most of the time that is with those like golfers and tennis players and sports people are looking for just something quick after they drink out, you know, in the hot sun. Um, but some other options would be smoking the pines or the food truck. Um, those are both going to be located at the Meadow Sports Park this year. Smoking the Pines is like our really delicious barbecue that the members love. Um, the food truck, that uh, varies by food based by week. Um, so they can do like chicken tenders, um, they also get tacos, really good stuff that the members love. Um, it's important to know where those are located, you know, so that you can direct them that way. Also the timing on these sheets um, are incorrect. I'll go ahead and correct those for you later. Um, but it's also important to know those times so that we're not just sending them over there when they're closed. Um, having the most information is really important so that we can communicate that to the members. They are looking to us for help. Um, so those are going to be their other dining outlets. The biggest thing without saying no, we can give them more options. On the front, I'll go ahead and go to the reservations. Um, so the reason why the reservations are so important for both lunch and dinner is because we do like to track everyone that's coming into the building. Um, it does keep track of how often they're in here. They do get emails. Um, so, like I said, the communication is really important, and a lot of it takes place just right through the computer. Um, some facts that you would like to know about reservations um, is eight is going to be the max that we are able to do through our authority. Anything above eight is going to have to be approved through a supervisor or a manager. So we'll just go ahead and take that name and number down if the supervisor or manager isn't reachable for you. Um, anything over 10 is going to be two servers. So just little things like that that a host would need to know or up here to help anyone. Um, a lot of times the members will ask those simple questions. You know, um, like, how many, can I make a reservation for 10 with you? You know, really quick, and let's say you're a server and you're not even a host. You know, just a quick, I know that I can take that name and number down. Just little information, that common questions that you'll get asked. Um, if you want, don't mind just coming over here, I'm just going to show you quickly how to make the reservation. Go ahead and click that. Um, so, you know, they're going to, you know, if, it's, if they're right in front of you, then most of the time they're going to be looking over it and questions are going to kind of be popping up, date, how many guests, things like that. If they're on the phone, usually they're going to answer, oh, this is Mr. Mason, I was just wondering if I can make a reservation. Okay, Mr. Mason, one moment, please. You'll go ahead and click the book and then this pops up for you. So the flow of the phone call is really easy when you're using the system because it kind of gives you those follow-up questions. Okay, Mr. Mason, what date are you looking for? Uh, you'll go ahead and use these arrows for the month. I'm using April 8th because this is the only reservation we can make. Reservations can only be made a week out. And that is to just make it fair to all the members because um, you will notice that we have the same members coming in on weekends. So if they could, I'm sure they'd book out every Saturday. But just to make it fair, they can only do it a week in advance. So we'll say Friday, April 8th. All right, Mr. Mason, how many guests can I do for you? And a big thing with our verbiage and vocabulary, we really want to keep it professional. So we're not going to say customers or people guests or members is just a little bit elevated. Uh, for four guests, all right, Mr. Mason, I can do that for you. What's your preferred time? Um, so if you can see the covers here, um, also this is touch screen, but don't use it. Oh no. 
Okay, so the covers here, this will fill up based on how many reservations we make. And I know 15 doesn't seem like a lot, um, but it's really just based on our pacing back in the kitchen. That really helps the flow of the night, um, happy guests. And so let's say he asked for 545 and we don't have 545, we would offer him 530 or six or anything around that. Um, if they are really, really prominent that they need that time, I gotta make a movie later at eight and we don't have that time available. Um, we're not gonna tell them no, so just can you please give me one moment if a manager is there, we'll go ahead and get see if we can get that manager approval. The managers will look at like a 30 minutes later, an hour later, see if we have big parties coming in, then we probably can't do that for them. Just based on little things like that, but um, to approve that, it will need a manager approval. And this will go like reddish gray, so you can't even click on it. So it does help you if you're up here. You won't be able to make a reservation then get in trouble for it later. It's not work like that. All right, Mr. Mason, we do have 545. We'll go ahead and click on that, then the next question would be, okay, what's the last name? Could you spell it for me? M-A-S-O-N. And then next, you're going to go ahead and confirm a first name. Uh, the reason being, I'll give a good example, is if let's say their last name is Smith. Do you see how many Smiths we have? And I could scroll through that. So the next thing we would do is request that first name. Hey, Mr. Mason, can I get that first name? Of course, it's Chad. Beautiful. The next thing that we're going to do is in the general notes, great, another host already marked it for me. I'm going to confirm that member number. Mr. Mason, can I confirm that member number is 1056? Yes, that's very Angela, that's my member number. So if that member number wasn't there, which happens a lot, those general notes are not filled in yet, we're going to ask for the member number and put it there. And then so these general notes, um, anything that a host puts in here or a server or whoever's working on the screen, these are always going to stay there. So that's important for member numbers, whether they're a doctor, spouse's name, kind of preferences like that. Uh, we also have different kinds of things that you can add here. So the special relationship is mostly for our VIP members. It will be marked yellow. Um, that could be board members or directors. Um, seating preferences, this actually happens a lot. The members know exactly what table they want. I want table 50, I want patio 64. Um, so we would put that there so that in the future when answering that phone call, um, they love member recognition. Um, Mr. Mason, I noticed that you like to sit at table 50. Should we try our best to get you that table again? Oh, Angela, that's great, thanks for remembering. It's like, haha, it's in my little cheat system. Um, also, food and drink preferences are really important as well. That's where we'll put allergies, vegetarian, gluten-free. Um, the reason why these notes are really important is because they're going to go directly to the server. So we got to make sure we're communicating all the way because members are not always going to also repeat everything to the server. They kind of um, will naturally most likely assume that if they tell the host, it's going to be communicated. So that's where you're going to put those kind of notes. Um, now, if it's like a one-time thing, that's going to be our visit notes. And so this would be our follow-up question right after the member number confirmation. It would be, uh, Mr. Mason, are there any visit notes or important things I should jot down for your reservation? Oh, yeah, actually, it's going to be an anniversary. Great. So we have these buttons here that you can just click, and it's going to add it. Um, but you can also type it, so whatever is easier. I also have kids coming, and one's a baby. Can I get a high chair? Of course, Mr. Mason. I'll go ahead and add that. And then I will go ahead and ask him, so Mr. Mason, is there anything else that I can help you out with? No, that will be great. So again, with the flow of the phone call, the system makes it really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read left to right. After he says there's nothing else we can help him with. All right, Mr. Mason. So I have you down for Friday, April 8th, for four people at 545. We are celebrating an anniversary, and we're going to need a high chair at that table. We will see you then. Thank you so much, Angela. Bye, Mr. Mason. Ooh. And so one thing I would like to point out that I did a lot um, in that just kind of verbiage teaching right there is in a conversation or a setting with them, try to do it at least three times. Uh, but as long as you can do it in the beginning, and thank you, Mr. Mason, have a wonderful night. Have a great day. Um, again, we're not going to just say, oh, have a good one. Have a great morning. Be a little bit direct, you know? Um, but that is how we do reservations. Um, one good thing I would like to point out is on our busy nights or busy days during lunch, members are absolutely most likely going to check out the lunch area or the dining area before coming to the host stand. Um, or I saw a bunch of tables open, can I go sit over there? When we actually have 55 more reservations coming in, um, the best way to put that to them, I mean, we know why we've got a bunch of reservations coming in, you know, they're coming in 15 minutes. But we're not going to just say, well, come look at my screen. A good thing to tell them is we do our reservations based on time, not the table. And again, that is, you know, for pacing purposes for us. And also, yeah, we do have that table open because beautifully enough, the server before flipped the table and that went 15 extra minutes. You know, that's why it's sitting like that. So that's also a common question. You know, they're eager to eat, they're hungry, so they're going to check it out themselves. Um, really quick, I'm just going to show you how to put the phone on the and transfer really quick. Um, even if you're not hosting, if you're walking by and the phone is ringing, um, and it's ringing more than two times, if you could just pick it up and at least put it on hold. Um, you know, the members will continue to call the second it does not get picked up. So
So, you know, the biggest thing, you know, we are here to help them. So if you hear it ring, even if you're just passing by right in here, I did it all the time. Just picked it up, put it on hold, went in the office. Hey, someone's on the line. Can you please grab it? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make a phone call and I'll just show you how to put it on hold. It's super simple. It's one button. But just so you know how to do it. Why don't you have a Let's just say they ask, um, can I be transferred to blah, blah, blah. We're just, can I make it? Can I make it? Can I make it? Yes. So you're just literally just going to click the hold button. And then now you can put the phone down or so ask some of the questions. No, yeah, it'll be good. And then to resume the call, you'll just go ahead and pick it up and you'll click resume. Perfect. And so let's say they ask to be transferred. You're going to go ahead and say, great, I can go ahead and transfer you right now to Mark. So I just chose Mark as an example. You can see we have a bunch of transfer numbers right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to click transfer, and his number is 122. Two. So we would go 122, two, and you're just going to click transfer. And then it's off. If you're flying, you can go ahead and do it. Super simple. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Is there any questions?